my next guest is no stranger to science fiction, having worked as a supporting artist on Star Wars and Blake Seven, as well as Doctor Who. I'd like to introduce supporting artist Nick Joseph. How are you, Nick? Hello, Alex. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. You, you okay in these strange times? Oh, it's dreadful, isn't it, eh? Just trying to keep uh, busy doing nothing. <laughs> As I said, you're, you're no stranger to science fiction and mm. it's taken you all over the world with events. How has that been? Are you a science fiction fan? Well, I was never a science fiction fan, but I have to be now. <laughs> Working on so many different bits and pieces. And uh, so what comes up if it's science fiction, I say yes. So have you gradually started to understand the uh, appreciation for your work or is it just something that you know you just come to accept well the thing is you've, you've got to be a bit crazy i think to be do science fiction these days because there's so many different things in science fiction whether you go to star wars doctor who blake seven or whatever you know if you're crazy enough to do it you do it <laughs> the other thing is if they're offering you enough money <laughs> well of course yeah and you've certainly embraced it as i say going all over the world with it uh, it's great though. I mean, I've travelled all the way from America to uh, Australia and every place in between, I think, at the moment. But I've, I've got another one coming up, hopefully, end of the year in um, the Isle of Wight. And then from that date, I travel over to Guatemala. Wow. <laughs> and then I come back and hopefully, uh, if it's still on, the one in uh, Brisbane, Australia. Wow, OK. And who'd have thought you know, these <laughs> jobs that you did you know, 40 years ago were taking you all over the world? Oh, it, it's good. It's good. Everything's paid for you, so why turn it down? <laughs> but in, in terms of Doctor Who, you weren't always wearing you know, bizarre science fiction costumes because amongst your Doctor Who work, you played cricket with Peter Davison. Mm -hmm. Did you actually get a chance to play much cricket or was it all very staged? No, we played cricket in between different uh, different scenes and that. We just disappeared into a little area where the cameras weren't watching. And uh, we did play a bit of cricket around. Peter was a good batsman and a good bowler, but he wasn't good good enough for me to bowl him out, though. <laughs> in my younger days, I did play cricket when I was, what, 14, 15 for Essex. So, um, you know... He tried his luck with me, but it didn't work for him. So we did have some good laughs. So something like that, are you told beforehand that they want you to play a cricketer? Or is it just, we'd like you at this location for a couple of days on Doctor Who? Well, what we did, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Peter was batting and I was bowling. And I was told to bowl gently so he could hit the ball here, there and everywhere. Um we did a few uh, rehearsals and uh, unfortunately for him, I got him out every time. <laughs> so I had to bowl a bit slower. <laughs> and then he obviously hit the ball here, there and everywhere, as I say, a few fours, a few sixes. And, you know, we got it got it in the can in the end. <laughs> but uh, Of all science fiction jobs, that must have been quite a, a nice one to do. Well, it was easy. You know, played cricket for a long time and... Uh, you know, batting and bowling. And I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but <clears throat> I was on the opposing side to bowl at him. Then I changed over to being the wicketkeeper. Then I was on the batsman on their side. And not many people have noticed that. So the next time you watch to, um, uh, Black Orchid, you have a look. Because I've played two different parts. <laughs> so you're successfully on the winning team regardless, really. Well, that's it. You had to be on the winning team every time. <laughs> but of course, your first contact with Doctor Who was with Tom Baker. Mm. Uh, you've worked on the Creature from the Pit, which, looking now, is a fantastic jungle set. Ooh, it, it wasn't one of those that I liked. You know, it was just one of those um, 
a quick thing. Go in, go out, do the job. I was only there for a couple of days, but I didn't like that one. But I did like the other one I did with him was, um, what was it now? Uh, Leisure Hive. Leisure Hive, that was it. You must have realised that. <laughs> yeah, Leisure Hive was a nice, easy job. Um, again, it was working with Tom Baker. It's a pleasure. It was a real pleasure because he is such a nice guy. He really is. But um, we had some laughs. and Because on that one, you were Nigel Lambert's assistant, my mind thinking. Mm, mm. Yeah, uh, actually, I did two little bits in that. Um, I was supposed to have been the tourist who got murdered. <laughs> Do you remember the story of that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, um, well, that was it. It was just a quick thing. You're walking, go in, get murdered, and that was it. So I thought, oh, well. And then they gave me the other little bits and pieces as the assistant. <coughs> Sorry, I've been talking a lot this morning. As you know, what what happened this morning next door. But, um, yeah, it was it's a nice job. I like nice, easy jobs. I don't like all these jobs that keep rushing and tearing around, you know. <laughs> it's, uh, but when you get to a nice job, you can sit down and do your job, read what's going on in the script and that, and then just get on with it. It's nice. And, and something like that, I assume you're just brought in for the actual filming days. There's no rehearsal or preparation. Um, well, I did a couple of rehearsals on it, but other than that, it, as I say, there's nothing really to do on it. You know, not like we did in um, Terminus and. Uh, uh, Black Orchid and um, Mark of the Rani. That was a big one, Mark of the Rani. Because for that, you were on location up in Shropshire. Mm, that's it. Yep. Uh, that must have been unusual to be fairly, you know, quite a way away from London for a shoot. Yeah, the one in Shropshire was nice with Colin Baker. Um, I didn't have a word to say because I was supposed to have been dumb. Been hit by this... Uh, um ronnie she's uh said you can't do this you can't do that so she takes the uh fluid from your brain and i i couldn't say a word all my actions were actions you know that's uh no it was a good one good one because towards the start of the story you're, you're amongst the group that hijacks the cart and and perry as well that's right yes yes i hij i uh, kidnapped perry and uh well, I won't tell you any more about that. We can just blank that little piece out. But I said to um, Nicola at the time, how do you want to play this? She said, well, just grab me. <clears throat> well, <laughs> yes, it was a bit of a quick rub there on that was. And uh, she said, no, not there. <laughs> well, I said, I just grabbed you and that was it. No, we did have a laugh on that one as well. So, um after kidnapping her, as you see, I got a gun placed at my head and that was the end of that little part. <laughs> and you mentioned the Rani, which was a character played by Kate Mara. Mm. Peter on set? Yeah, lovely girl. Very nice. It's a shame now, isn't it? Lots of these people are disappearing off the face of the earth. But she was nice, very pleasant. Not like some people you work with are very unpleasant. But you get on with it. You have to cope with it, and that's it. Because I imagine between takes, you, you'd be standing around on set. Would you have a great deal to do with the regulars, you know, people like Tom and Peter Davison? Yeah. Um, when we weren't um, filming little bits and pieces, uh, which I was in, um, we got talking. I mean, I see Peter and Colin very often now, mainly Colin Baker. What? If we go to a convention and I don't see him and he sees me, you hear a big voice coming out. Oi, Nick. And you don't turn around. You just wave and go, hello, Colin. <laughs> but, um, no, they're fine. Nice. Why not? We have, we'll all have to work with each other. And as I said in, in the introduction, yeah, science fiction is not something you're a stranger to. How does something like Doctor Who and the following compare to Blake 7 or Star Wars? Well, with Blake 7, it was completely different. Um, being an android, 
um, Muller was murdered by the android and obviously the android took over. And <clears throat> the whole episode is around that android. And again, you have to um, go through that script and remember what's going on. And then the voice comes out and you have to act to somebody else's voice, which can be a little bit difficult sometimes. But with this one, we got it working quite well. Um, with the scene coming through where they try to um, get rid of the android and they blew, blew the scenery up. Well, they did blow the scenery up. The whole lot came down. <laughs> Typical BBC, isn't it? Again, with all the pyrotechnics. So they rebuilt it. We did it again. And fine. No problem. Um, and then obviously all, all the bits and pieces that went on in between. And then they tried to um, get rid of the android. So they lured him across the Iron Bridge. And what happened then, they put the, um, the cables on the Iron Bridge and lured, lured him down. And as he got down towards the end, they pulled the switch and electrocuted the android. The pyrotechnics in the back of my costume, and as I went down, they, boom, they caught fire. And the next thing I realised, I'm being covered in something, powder or something, because they caught the costume on fire. And I'm burning there, not knowing what's going on. <laughs> now, I went to do a, um, a Doctor Who convention in Coventry last year. And the guy who um, owns all the costumes, um, Gary Holland, actually has that costume with the burn mole in the back of it. Yeah. <laughs> That's, um, that particular part was was more than just a, a supporting artist part. You know, it was quite a heavy character almost within the piece. Would you have been on that for long? You know, would that have been a couple of weeks or just a dull day? In Blake 7, that costume was very heavy because on my shoulders I had this uh, cage. It came up quite high and the head sat on top. So it's over six foot tall, this um, character, and I'm only five foot four. So they, they tried to put me in a grow bag the night before, but it didn't work. <laughs> but they put this, um, as I say, a cage which was made and the head went on and twisted. So if you look at the last scenes in that episode, you'll see Avon come down and put the head on and twist it as he falls back electrocuted. That's that's the part of, of the thing where the, the head goes on, on top of that uh, cage. But uh, it was quite heavy. <laughs> Would that have been your most difficult costume in, in anything, not just Blake 7? So that again, sorry, you broke up. Would that have been your most difficult costume, not just in Blake 7, in anything? That was that was a costume was made specifically for that character. Because we had two costumes, one for the um, scientist and one for the, uh, the android. And I suppose, you know, with the career that you've had, working on Bond must have been a great opportunity. Oh, Bond, yes. <laughs> um, as you know, I was the uh, armory officer. And the scenes that I did with Roger was we had to run down the staircase and I covered him with the guns. We got down to uh, the lower level <clears throat> and we sat behind the barrels firing away. And all of a sudden, I had water come all over me. And I thought, actually, the roof was leaking. Carried on. It happened again. I thought, what the heck's going on here? And I turned around. There's Roger Moore behind me with a water pistol. <laughs> so uh, that was that. <laughs> he was good fun to work with then. <laughs> Man, you watch your back with him. <laughs> Yeah, he was a good guy, really funny. He, he was a um, very big actor, obviously, but some big actors you work with, you don't really know them. But with Roger, he was just another guy, really. He just liked to 
mess about on set and, and as I say, it was a bit of a joker. <laughs> and uh, is there one particular part that you're proudest of or production that you've worked on? Well, Star Wars, really, um, <clears throat> that's the main thing I get uh, conventions for, the Comic Cons. Um, I had to go for an interview for that. I went to um, Denmark Street in London. Um, at the time, you don't know who these people are you're looking and talking to. George Lucas, you know, was there, and I, I didn't know who he was, and Gary Kurtz and somebody else. Anyway, a couple of days later, my agent, well, at the very beginning, she said to me, would you be happy to do a, a cheap movie called Star Wars? I said, yeah, OK, we're not doing anything. Anyway, I got the part, went and had a fitting. Um, I walked into, where was it now? Moss Bros. I think that was in Piccadilly, but I'm not certain now. Um, I walked in there and the lady said to me, oh, I said, well, what's the matter? She said, I was expecting somebody about six foot tall. I said, well, I was six foot tall, but I've run 51 marathons now, so I run myself into the ground. <laughs> anyway, they found a costume which is near enough. The trousers weren't quite the same colour, but that was it. We did that, went on to the set. I was supposed to be in there for two days, uh, which turned into 15. Um, because after that, they needed all the close-ups and what was the other guy? Um, Derek Lyons. He was the other middle bearer. Um, he did, I did, a th I think he did two days on it, but I'm not certain. But as I say, I got 15 days out of that. And um, I got into the uh, briefing room, which the character, Arho Extrafon, he was a historian. And he was taking notes of the beginning of the war which was going to be happening very soon. Um, have you seen the other photographs that I had there? Yes, yes, a fantastic show. Yeah. Um, the metal room, the briefing room, and there was another one there. I can't even remember what I did on that, <clears throat> where I had Mark Hamill by the arm. Um I can't even remember doing it, actually, but I must have done because I'm there. And I can't even remember what episode it was on. <clears throat> but there you are. Excuse me a minute. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, on, on the note of an absolutely fantastic film, Star Wars, I think that's an opportune moment to say thank you very much, Nick, for your time. And it's been a pleasure to talk to you. Pleasure, pleasure. Anytime you're ready, give us a shout. <laughs> Thank you.